Thank you for the uh, invitation, for the opportunity to be with you today to say a few words over these next few minutes about um, transport and uh, in particular uh, transit oriented development uh, and the opportunities that we have in South Australia. So I do appreciate the opportunity to be here in the middle of your uh, planning week and uh, uh, appreciate the honour given to me to uh, participate in this uh, prestigious event. Uh, tonight. Some of you may know I've uh, been away for um, uh, seven weeks on holidays. So I've spent seven weeks in Europe, haven't been back that long. Thought I'd take a few slides while I was away and give you a uh, talk through some of the, uh, uh, the sites that I was able to become involved in. I did spend time in the Greek islands, spent time in Italy. I hired a car in Italy. Uh, it was a man. Uh, it was an interesting experience driving on the roads. Italian drivers do have to get just used to the fact that if my windscreen wipers are on, I'm turning. <laughs> <laughs> no point in complaining about them honking your horn, that was the way it was going to work. And I did notice the experience, and uh, we do put a lot of effort here with lane widths and um, uh, safety in our roads. Uh, I noticed the experiences we had over there is that um, they seem to have their roads carefully designed and constructed so that at regular intervals and mysterious intervals the road is just a little bit less than the width of two cars <laughs> which is always an interesting challenge if you're approaching one of those pinch points and I found if you slow down it's not wise if you get overtaken from someone behind um, so driving in Italy was an interesting experience um, the effort on we put into disability access is another thing I found interesting over there when you get to the top of a you know, flight of stairs with my gammy knees and it says you've just climbed 392 stairs without a lift or an escalator or a ramp or anything inside uh, it gave an indication of uh, some of the experiences you have overseas and I did also notice in terms of planners that I don't think anyone would be going to come up with a conclusion in Italy that the site's unsuitable for the proposed development <laughs> it seemed to me that if it was a cliff face you built on it if it was a uh, flat space you parked on it and um, no one would dare make a judgement otherwise. But I was actually interested in uh, being able to bring back some uh, interesting conclusions, <laughs> the, uh, some of the quality projects that we could actually learn from, bring back here. Our aim is that we have quality outcomes, delivering quality projects here in South Australia and uh, using quality people. Now, I don't know if you can read this, but if you can find this guy, we're interested. Smile and body loss lovers, insanity, diarrhea, making men's penis and strong, women with pregnancy problems, misfortunes, demand debts. Um, if you can find him, we've got a job for him in our department <laughs> with these skills. So, look, at currently we're in a position where the South Australian government is spending more on infrastructure than it has for decades. Fair figures for the last state budget, you can see how the capital investment program has increased over recent years, some to do with public partnerships but mainly to do with capital investment. We may have some adjustment that comes through with that as the uh, state responds to some of the more recent uh, financial uh, issues associated from uh, world events or associated with world events. We may have some other funding that comes in as the federal government contributes some funds hopefully to fill the gap. And if I put last year's state budget in the area of categories, you can see that the major spends in last year's budget are going to go in the areas of water, of health and transport, not surprisingly. And in fact, if you've been taking notice, you would be aware that the South Australian Government over the last 12, 20 months or so has actually announced essentially $2 billion worth of activity on health almost two billion dollars to be spent on the Marjorie Jackson Nelson Hospital. Two billion dollars or more to be spent on water and in the last state budget we had a program of two billion dollars over ten years on transport. What I see is that whenever the government is spending money we have both an opportunity and a challenge. A challenge that we can think strategically and that we can see that as an opportunity to add value to the government spend. And I go back some 10 years or so when I was involved in a program or a project that was essentially the redevelopment of Glenelg West Beach. 
And what we had here was the government making a commitment to spend some limited amounts of money. Five and a half million on bridging the Patawalunga, another few million on uh, extending the breakwater in the mouth of the, uh, of the Patawalunga. What we had at that stage was Adelaide's prime tourist road ending in a pothole car park overtaken by uh, the Hoon element in the evenings, had to be uh, sealed off. We had boating facilities that didn't work. We were adjacent to a waterway described, I think as an overstatement, but described in publications as Australia's most polluted waterway. We had an entertainment complex that worked two months of the year and all presided over by Magic Mountain. We go the other direction, we had an airport with a runway that was too short, a serious treatment work, still in the early 90s, sending sludge out into the Gulf, and um, a rubbish dump in West Beach Recreation Reserve that had never been rehabilitated. We went through a process of a limited amount of government money as a catalyst for hundreds of millions of dollars spent on by the private sector to achieve a redevelopment in the, the Glenelg West Beach area. More recently, we were asked to get involved in the extensions to the Convention Centre, which gave us an opportunity to review where we were in terms of the ACE development. A 70s development that had actually um, put on place the original Convention Centre and the um, higher building and so on. Uh, and I guess a chance to review what had been done and to be able to ask the questions how we in Adelaide were addressing our river. Um, and what we actually had at the time was a lot of barriers, a lot of confused entrances, and even when we had a building, um, and it wasn't any of the early convention centre buildings, all the buildings introverted, all looked inward, all the function centres in the higher looked inward. Where we did have a building like the Festival Centre with the glass wall that did um, uh, look towards the river, uh, it's not shown in this slide, but we put so much landscaping in front of it that you couldn't see the river from the building anyway. We had an opportunity to do something about that. I was asked to, I was told that we had $55 million to extend the convention centre. It had to be opened in October 2001 because there was an international wine convention. Don't exceed your budget and don't be late. And I spent three months walking politicians around to look at the opportunities that we had here to do something other than put a big box at the back of what was the exhibition hall um, when we started this uh, project in the uh, latter part of the 1990s. And so we saw it as an opportunity, this time no private sector money, but to actually achieve something in the public realm by starting the process of turning the precinct around. We got some more money out of Cabinet. I had a continual fight with Peter Vanderhoven, who was a great operator of the convention centre because every cent extra we got, he wanted to build a bigger kitchen, I wanted to put it into the uh, public realm and the external appearances. So we did come up with a new entrance for the convention centre. We did actually turn a building around, the largest footprint building in Adelaide, and face the river. We put a uh, promenade on the um, seaside, or sorry, the riverside of the building, some access down to the river. We peeled away the plaza to open up the festival theatre and um, were able to make some moves in the area of um, the, uh, the centre, again by some public money, giving an opportunity to do something that's a bit more than just what individual projects uh, still a lot more to do. Governments change, funding changes, you're not able to finish what you set out to do and there's still an agenda ahead of us there.